Hello everybody, this is uh, Channing Lowe. Welcome to another tutorial. In this episode I'm going to be showing how to set up a project in Premiere. So first of all, we're going to start Premiere Pro. And whenever you start up Premiere Pro, it's going to bring up uh, this little splash screen here. And under this splash screen, you're going to have several op options. I've covered this in an earlier episode, but just to quickly go over setting up a project, we're going to be going over these items right here, either new project or open project. New project, if you're starting a new project, open project, if you have a project that you've already worked on before. And this will actually bring up over here the recent projects that you've been working on on that on this specific computer and uh, you can just simply click on one of these and we'll open up that project uh, but we're going to show you how to set up a new project uh, so as we click new project here it's going to bring up and open this window right here two things to kind of quickly understand here is uh, setting up a new project you'll want to choose a location where your project file is saved and a couple of things to think about is whether or not you want to save that project if you have an external hard drive a lot of people will save that project file on their external hard drive next to the media uh, just so they keep it all together in one uh, folder location some people prefer to save the project file on the computer they're working on and keep the media on an external hard drive just so they're separate and if you uh, if the computer crashes you don't lose everything you you can uh, you can have a backup of your project file there in kind of two separate locations so as long as you back up things and you keep your projects backed up and uh, make copies of everything when you're finished and uh, that then you're, you'd be fine if you're working on an external hard drive or a server uh, you'll just have to decide on the workflow and decide where you want to save your project file kind of just to describe the nature of a project file here one thing you'll notice here of a project file, here's a Premiere Pro project file. It's got that little Premiere icon on it. This is kind of a bigger project with a lot of media. And notice, uh, notice the size here. It is incredibly small. It's like 78 kilobits, which is really, really teeny. So this project, all this really is, is just basically an edit, what they call an edit decision list, or a file that tells your media how to act. It was something like PowerPoint. When the uh, PowerPoint, when you save a PowerPoint project file, that actually adds your media to, it embeds that media inside of your pro, uh, your PowerPoint project. So if you add audio and video, it's going to increase the size of this project file. Premiere is a little bit different. This is uh, this project file acts independently of all the media. It does not add the media to it. It just this is just a command document that tells these files here how to act. That tells your project files and your your media how to act. See, and I've got my uh, files here. In, I've got my media files in these folders that are separate. I'm going to look look at that. Notice this one. This is just a proxy footage so it's like 42 gigabytes original project all the project media is about like 300 gigabytes so it's a fairly it's a decent sized project but it's uh but with the the proxy files that's for 46 gigabytes and the project file once again tells all this media how to act and that is very small so as we start a new project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, first of all, I want to tell this where I want to save my project file. So I'm going to hit Browse. I'm going to go to my external hard drive. I've got a little external hard drive here. I'm going to go inside of this folder right here uh, and say this is a project that we're working on. This one called Left Hanging. I've got all the media in here from uh, day one, day two, music, proxies, a whole bunch of things that are in here. I'm going to select this folder here inside. And now that Left Hanging folder, oops, I selected day two, so let's do that that was selected accidentally select folder now I am in that left hanging folder so that is where it's going to save my project file now I'm going to get go under name and I'm going to name my project file and what I usually like to do at the end of at the end of these uh, project files I usually like to name them project so there's no confusion that that is an actual project file there so I've got the left hanging edit project and then you can hit OK and it will save it into that area but first of all let's go through some items here when it brings this up this also brings up your project settings which is also found under file and project settings later on if you need to change them but right now it brings up your project settings asking if you want to set up your project first of all video render and playback if you have these options both available you'll want to choose gpu acceleration this uses your graphic card in, some, in your computer which will speed things up as far as effects are concerned and editing is concerned uh, it uses the video card to play back your video and render effects if you don't have a supported video card this might be grayed out and it will be software only which can really slow things down especially when you're exporting a final project it can take a really long time if it's just using the software only to export it out if you don't have if this is grayed out you can go and check your video drivers and make sure that they're all up to date usually it's just a, a, a video card update that will make that available I went through this in one of our earlier episodes. We're talking about how to display time code and, and audio samples. Standard is time code and standard is audio samples. If you're doing some audio editing, you might be able to do it by milliseconds if you're really doing some nitty gritty audio. Capture format, DVO HD. This is for capturing video off of uh, tape, off of DV tape or HDV tape. 
So this is setting up for capture if you're still using uh, DV or HDV cameras. Scratch disks. If you're capturing video, this is telling you where to save your captured video. It's also asking where the video previews will be saved at. And I, right now, by default, this is in uh, the, the same project folder that you have. If you render video effects, it's going to put those video effects in a folder and audio effects as well in, inside the same folder where my project is. Premiere will autosave every so often, and if your machine crashes, you can revert back to one of those earlier saves if necessary. This automatically saves it on the computer that you're working on. This is kind of smart because if your hard drive crashes and you're saving your project file on your hard drive, on your external hard drive, then you'll have a backup on of the autosave files on the actual computer instead of the external hard drive. In just settings, I will have a, a couple of tutorials on this in the future. Actually, the next episode I will have one on how to copy media into your project file and have it copied to your same the same folder that you're working out of. So if you take your external hard drive out and move to another machine, it's going to it's uh, going to take the media with you instead of leaving it on the computer that you're working on, so you can switch computers. Uh, but we will go through this, and then I will also go through the proxy workflow in a future episode. After we're all done with that, with all those little minor setups here, we're going to hit OK, and it will start a new project. One quick little tip here for setting up projects, because uh, one thing you're going to be doing in Premiere is you're going to be renaming files. If you're doing things by scene numbers, you're going to be renaming these uh, your files from your, your media to different names. Let me just quickly mention, do not change the name of uh, the, the actual video files. A lot of people get, get a little bit excited about starting to rename things, get into organizing things, and they want to organize everything. So they'll go inside of like the actual, this is from a red camera here, they'll go in, inside the actual folders where the video clips are, and they'll rename these clips on the actual hard drive. Don't ever do that. That can mess up a product, that can mess up media really, really fast. So usually when you dump off a card from a, a camera, you just dump the entire card into its own folder. I notice this is just like the red camera folder on day two. You just dump it right in there, then you leave it alone. When you import it, you can rename those files in Premiere. Those files will reference the original files and will leave these things with their kind of weird little names here that actually kind of has a meaning on, on red camera. But it's it's going to leave the original name alone and it's going to name it rename it within the software. Very, very important, especially if you're sending a project off to something like DaVinci Resolve to be color corrected afterwards. You want the media files to be left alone, even sound as well. You go into the sound files, leave those alone. Let them stay the same name, and you can import them into Premiere and change the name in Premiere and leave the original files alone. Okay, a couple quick things to set up here. We're going to go under Edit, Preferences, and we're going to hit the General tab here. I'm just going to bring up our General tab here. For setting up for working on a project, a uh, new project here, one thing that I usually change here under Video Transition Default, I usually do this by seconds because if you're working in different frame rates, the default that has up here is 30 frames. If you're working in 24 frame per second, uh, 24 frames per second timeline, 30 frames is a little bit longer than a one second transition. I know this is nitpicky, but I like to choose seconds, and that way, if you're 24 or 30 or 60, it'll change it. It'll keep it at uh, one complete second as opposed to frames. Another thing here is this uh, still image default duration. If you're going to be importing still images like photos, this is how long each one is going to last as a video clip. It generate it turns them into video clips and makes them last five seconds long. You can expand them out, but if you're doing something where you're doing a montage, you might want to think about what your still image default duration, maybe like three seconds, maybe eight seconds, depending on how long you each one, want each one. It'll be kind of a convenience thing when you import them and have them all at a certain length. Depending if you're doing like a music or if you're doing like a wedding video or something like that, then you won't have to stretch out each individual clip if you need them to be longer. You can set it before you import them. And the other thing here in the general tab I want to cover is this default to scale frame size here. If you're importing clips and you're doing a mixture of resolutions, this is very helpful. Most of the time I keep this check mark. Can't remember by default if this is on or off, but I would make sure this is check mark before you start importing footage. It was if you're doing like 4K and 5K footage and maybe some 1920 by 1080 mixed, you want Want everything to scale otherwise if you're working in 1920 by 1080 timeline and you import some 4k footage and you drop it into a 1920 by 1080 timeline it'll be zoomed up because it is larger resolution if this is check marked when you import the footage it will add this check mark to the footage and then it will resize the footage based on the timeline that you're working in very convenient and then to make sure your project is, is, is set up, make sure your autosave is automatically saving projects. I tell this to save it at least every two minutes. I think the default is like five minutes or ten minutes. I can't remember. So I change this to save it more frequently. Maximum project versions I'd have. I'd pump that way up just so uh, you can have multiple versions of the project file that you've been working on in different. So you can kind of go back in time and, and grab the files that you need if, if, something, if you 
I accidentally deleted something. Under media here, a couple of things that you want to set is media cache files and the media cache database here. When it uh, creates, generates things like waveform files and thumbnails, notice that it saves on the computer that you were working on here. And then when you get up and move to a different computer, right now it's on my D drive, which is uh, kind of the expanded hard drive on this actual computer here. But when you get up and move to a different computer and you open that up, it's going to have to regenerate a lot of this information. Uh, so a couple things that you can do here is uh, per project, I would recommend taking a little extra time, just if, if you're going to be working on multiple computers especially uh, moving from computer to computer if you're working on a server I'd say and you're going working internally in a, in a location where everybody's working on a server you can browse and put the, those files on the internal and you can actually put those files on the uh, on the server that you're working on this with my hard drive here I'm gonna go under the project that I'm working on I'm gonna select that folder and if you do, if you check mark save media cache files next to the, next to the originals, it's going to put it in the actual folder where uh, the video files are. But I just kind of want to save it in that general location right there. And I'm actually going to change for this project my media cache database for saving like audio waveforms and thumbnails. Uh, so I'm going to go under same folder, select, and I'm going to move any files that have been saved in my D location to that new location. And uh, you can actually clean that out and have it regenerate if you wish by just hitting clean. So now that I've got those set up, I'm going to hit OK, and I am ready to start importing footage and start working on my project. And the last thing I'm going to do here is hit, uh, if you're on a PC, Control S, and on a Mac, Command S. And uh, what that does is it updates, it saves your project file and updates it to all the changes that I've done here. Control S, you see it save project, and now it has updated my project file, and I'm ready to go. And just remember to hit Control S multiple times, uh, frequently as you're editing, just a good habit to get into.